aging face that this world has forgotten. What is up, guys? And of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with Children, of course, Scarender. And today we're going up against Joey Hernandez. We actually had a battle before, which actually ended in, of course, Joey's favor. Now, it was a rather, I wouldn't say hexy battle, but, you know, I clearly used Pokemons that had less than ideal accurate moves, such as, of course, Oricorio with Hurricane. And, you know, it ended up eventually backfiring on me and I did lose that game. So it was a very close one and quite honestly it was a very fun one. Joey is a very, very good player. A very fun one at that, mostly because he's played the game right, but he uses unconventional Pokemon to play the game right, which just makes all of them more awesome to actually battle him. So, looking to my opponent's team, we have, of course, Delmise, Silvalli, Gyarados, which I really was hoping not was a Mega, Vikavolt, Kumala, and Bruxius. So, a lot of offensive threats here, and also Vikavolt can be kind of troublesome for me. I am using M4, which is a banner variant, not Reckless, because it's unattainable at this moment in this game. Mega Glalie, Magnuson, Specs Primarina, Mammoth Swine with Life Orb, and Fire Oricorio. So, just straight on at it, it looks like at least that my Silv or my um, M4 makes for a decent lead, no matter what it brings outside the Bruxius, because if it blinks, it of course the Jaros, I can go for Wild Charge, and I can Flare Blitz the rest, basically. And, uh, yeah, also, he has no rocks, which is awesome, because that means that my Fire Oricorio should be able to do work against the team, because it's not that easily threatened out, and I actually can switch that in and out as I so desire, just because of that very own reason that, you know, I will not be able or forced to switch away too much. So with all that said, let's go into the game. So from the get-go, my opponent leads up with Delmise. As I laid out, of course, Ember as stated. And I am directly going to go for the Flare Blitz. I feel like there is no reason for me over predicting here. And I actually knock out the Delmise turn 1. It's awesome, but at the same time, there is a risk with this. And that is that I do enforce, of course, Jaros come in here and just start setting up. Which is, you know, I do not want to do that. As he goes to kiss me, which is the Bruxius. And I can't necessarily take any risk here because Waterfall will kill me. So I'm bringing Primarina here, trying to soak the hit from Bruxius. But the thing is here, while it is resisted and I'm super bulky, it still does roughly 25%. Which kind of states, you know, the Bruxius is just that dangerous, it's just so hard to deal with. So I'm going to try to pull a double here. Really, really was hoping I was going to bring Gyarados here, trying to soak potential hits from me. Um, but that did not transpire. So I'm kind of stuck here. The Volt Switch will definitely not hurt Kamala, so all I really can do here is go for a full Switch. And then after that, basically, I'm going to bring Hate or Hope that he goes for an attacking move. I'm, I'm kind of felt that it was probably a dumb idea. And he goes for a Wish here, which kind of enforces that this was a dumb idea. Uh, because there is no reason for me of attacking here. He has, he has to be able to protect against me. And I don't want to be locked into a move. Enforcing the idea that he just can bring a stay dead, you know, the Gyarados back in and forth. So I'm gonna have Disciple us pull a double basically to see if he comes with uh, um, or goes for Protect. He did not do that, he went directly for Gyarados, which was awful because then I go for a Wild Shard due to Intimidate, I would not have been able to take it out. Now I have to attack this, I have no switching to try to stop its setup, and I get a crit. And not only do I get a crit, I get a freaking flinch crit from Oricorio Heath. The, of course, Oregorio just coming through, and quite honestly, I, I will say this, it's not all unfair, it's quite disgusting, because that meant that that Gyarados is not able to deal with my Oregorio. It only needed one crit, and clearly a flinch at that, yeah, I am still faster. So I'm really sorry about that, but at the same time, I, it had to be done, right? Uh, I still don't have necessarily a switch in here, the only way I can deal with Kumala is to actually try to set up, predicting the, of course, wish. Uh, Call Mine is a decent setup, one could prefer, of course, Toxic or anything like that, but against Kamala, wouldn't that matter, so Call Mine Roots is what I'm going with, but of course, Air Slash, not Hurricane this time around the Revelation Dance. So I go and go for Air Slash, basically, you know, I want to flinch action, but it's not that easy, and he's just gonna retaliate with Return, and uh, surprisingly enough, it's enough to KO, or, you know, close enough, I mean, I I'm killing myself with, of course, a Life Orb next turn. Uh, I was basically scouting for that Protect over and over and over, but it never came. It definitely never came. Rare Slash will do immense amount of damage, but I will follow, of course, my own life orb damage. But quite honestly, my Oricorio did so much here, it's... I love it. Definitely an unappreciated Mon. I mean, it's kind of... It's easier to use with Stealth Rocks and not on the field. But my opponent is just going to set up another, of course, Wish here. 
And I basically have to go to Ashgard, or of course my Mega Glalie. And I need to go for that heavy damage, even though that I know it's so likely that Jardos will come in. Uh, I'm still gonna go for, of course, the, the return. I couldn't go for a free strike in case that um, he's gonna stay with his Kamala. It just would have meant that just it would continue. So I do believe return is the right play for me to make here, but I was not sure it was gonna KO. And quite honestly, that wasn't Yo either. So it was probably a roll in my favor, uh, or it went in my favor, but it was a roll most likely. So anyway, Flugnet's like gonna come in here. Now, Vicavolt can't do anything to my cores and Magnus Zone, so I'm just gonna bring that in. Try to soak any hits it goes for, as it goes for a Flash Cannon, and that's not gonna do anything. And knowing that it has to switch out, I'm going for a Volt Switch myself. Now, had it been Ballsy, he would have stayed in there, but then again, I would just have bring Hadar anyway over my import. So I go right on at it for, of course, that Volt Switch, as it's not gonna kill the Kamala, because Kamala, as stated, so god and special defensive, it's so hard to bring down. So I'm just gonna bring on just here my specs, of course, Prima Arena, and here on out, I'm just gonna go for damage. There are only so many plays I can make against the Kamala. I really need, really need to break a Sunder Finx here. But the Kamala do actually outspeed me, and here is what I kind of started to think that, you know, I, I have to creep more Finx, because if you're gonna use specs and be able to try to take hits at the same time, you, you're just gonna fall before it's too late. So plug and come in here. I have to, of course, outspeed this at least. I'm basically was scouting whether or not it was Scarf, to be honest, as this Moonblast actually just one shots the Vicka Bolt. So Pre Marina, calm down. So anyway, he's gonna bring his Sil Valley, which I couldn't see what it was, but it is actually a normal type Sil Valley, which is awesome because it actually has the move both to do a lot of things with the normal set, of course, Triad type being one of the more especially oriented the move that definitely does a lot of damage. As you guys will see here, this trial attack is kind of outrageous. It almost KOs my Hadar as I will be able to, of course, retaliate with abandoned superpower and just straight out, you know, knock it out. So anyway, his last Pokemon is now Bruxius, and I kind of got this in the bag already. So as I bring Bruxius, I'm going to bring in my Mamoswine or my ex-wife and basically sack it because I do want to finish this in style. And the only way for me in doing so is actually sack my ex-wife. I think that's important, I think everybody sacks their ex-wife at some time. But how I wanted to finish this game was of course go with a sucker punch with them board, just wrap it up with it because I just wanted that banded hit. Well, I will say this, the idea is right, the execution is definitely there, but my opponent is not dumb. So he goes for awkward yet, definitely see what I'm trying to do, he's not gonna have any of that. And we're just gonna bring in Magnusona and wrap up the game from there, so... That is a GG and definitely a 2 0 victory in my favor. And finally, I did get my revenge from Joey. Joey, like I said here, we battled once before here in Sunny Moon, and he did win the last time, and quite fairly so. So I was kind of glad that you know, I was able to, of course, win against him. It should be noted, though, I do believe my team is slightly stronger than his. I do believe he has brings the gimmicks to the game, but, you know, one can't really just ignore that you know i have magnus zone definitely one of the more overpowered pokemon for this generation and it definitely was showcased here so yeah you know with all said and done i really have to give joey you know all the credits here because while my team is really strong and did outmaneuver around around it one really has to see it you know the air slash against of course the gyarados and getting a flinch really matter in ways that how joey could of course approach my team and it paid off a lot in my favor uh, and I have, like I said here, give more credit to Yoey, of course, using the normal Silvalli. I do believe Silvalli has been kind of, um, kind of bashed aside for a long time now. It isn't as good as people making it out to be from the beginning. I do believe the biggest issue with it is because people are so uh, insisting on using, of course, you know, every plate or every memory, I should say, on it, you know, have made a different typing. Silvalli is a very, very good normal type. Uh, is close to legendary stats and a very well-rounded stats at that and one really has to consider that maybe the normal variant is the one that is the one that we're using. Also, Bruxy is awesome. That mon definitely, I feel it's so underrated because the damage I put in that Pokemon is just disgusting. I I hate it at the same time that I love it. I, I It's great seeing that, so thank you for showcasing that, Joey. Uh, everybody has been watching, thank you for doing just so, and uh, yeah, yeah. I really hope to have more uploads as, of course, the Christmas hits by. Uh, I have a lot of videos done and I hope that I'll be able to upload them before I'm actually going away because I'm going away this Christmas, so, um, yeah. With that said, I want to thank you guys for watching, clearly. 
and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, guys, of course, take care.